And we're friends now, so we should know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Please don't let me walk around calling you the wrong name because no, that would have been like, like really? Like that. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't tell me? <laughs> <laughs> Five years later. Right. 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 <laughs> Hello and welcome to everyone listening or watching the Written a Melanin podcast or YouTube channel, wherever this day may have found you. I am glad that you are here. I am CM Lockhart and I'm here with LaCase Marie Cousineau and this is the Written a Melanin podcast where we add melanin to your pages. And we are here with Danis L. Reed and Hi. she is talking to us about her book, Trust. And if you guys are listening to this, you should know that she was on the first ever live stream for the podcast. And you can watch that on the Written in Melanin YouTube channel. And there'll be a link in the description box so that you can do that. Okay, this is the second half of that live stream and it is called Spoiler Talk. And if you know what spoilers are, you know that, that we are going to tell you what happens in the book. So if you haven't read the book, this would not be the first place to start. Go read the book and then come back to this. Okay. Just back up. Yes. <laughs> that being said, consider yourself rightfully warned. We will be talking about Trust by Dana L. Reed. And yeah, there you go. Fantastic. We're good. Let's Ryan do it. Away. Let's <laughs> talk about this. The first thing we're going to talk about that I have been waiting for like the last, what, two, three, five weeks, uh -oh. a year, my entire life to ask you, what's up with the machete? Oh, oh. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, what is it? What is it? Ah, <laughs> oh, the machete. The machete. So creative freedom. Yeah. <laughs> if you're if you're listening to this or tuning into this, wherever you're at, and you're bold and you haven't read the book, but you want to know what we talked about anyway. In the book, when uh Ruth is being attacked by her abusive husband, he pulls out not a knife, mm. not a razor, he pulls out a machete. And he attacks her with a full blown machete, like chopping through the jungle machete. Right, right. And... You gonna cut me? <laughs> we were so confused. Like, where do you get a machete from? Why do you have a machete? It's like cartel. It's like cartel. Right, level. right, right. Not even a hatchet, an actual yeah. machete. I, I don't know. I just thought, I mean, I don't want him to, um, like, shoot her or. Like, oh, yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know. And I just didn't think like just a knife would do it. So I want to make a little more dramatic. Um, and then also, you know, he's spaced out. He's drunk. It's the middle of the night. So he's not thinking clearly. I don't know where he picked this up from. I don't know why he's laying around the house, but <laughs> that's what he came with. And I'm so glad that that's what he grabbed because he didn't even know how to use it. So yeah. exactly. Yeah. It's memorable. It was so memorable. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's like the first thing that we talked about. We're like, the machete. <laughs> <laughs> but you said your husband has a machete. Did you say that? <laughs> yeah. No, <laughs> sir. <laughs> Cause I wrote that on my notepad. Whose husband? <laughs> <in the study? laughs> it's uh -huh. not mine. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So let's get to it. Right? <laughs> I'm not gonna throw. I can't throw glass houses. I can't throw stones. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know where he got it. I don't know why, but he's like, you know, in case somebody breaks in, I'm like, who's gonna get close enough for you to use a machete? <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know one thing, whoever it is, they will never see that coming. You will not Thank expect you. somebody to yep. dice you up with a machete, machete. So Yeah. It gets the point across. It definitely I does. I think he, he lived in Haiti for a minute. He was like, you know what, that's a good idea. I should have a machete. Mm. Maybe so. Mm -hmm. Probably use it as chopped fruit or something. I don't know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Please be careful with machetes, anybody there watching our list. There you go. <laughs> <Be careful. laughs> well, I feel like that leads into another question that i okay. like super spoilery one if that's okay chelsea yeah. it's spoiler talk if anybody who's watching knows what they're in for so go at <laughs> it i mean we're on the ruth subject okay how did you feel about killing i i uh, oh true disclosure i felt 
great about it. Like I thought mm. this is a good story. Like I wrote this, yeah. I did that. They'll never see it coming. You're right. But when I, when I started getting feedback, yeah. um, and like knowing that how much people connected with her and then I just took her away, I felt so guilty. I felt so bad. You should. Um, yeah, I do. I do. <laughs> and, like it's so bad that I've talked to my mom and she's like, well, you know, you can like bring her back in a spiritual sense and then in next stories, you know, oh, spiritually yeah. she could still be, be there. Cause I, maybe I shouldn't have taken her away, but in my mind I was thinking, um, like my whole, the, the thread that was running through the story is, you know, we're making great strides and trying something that's never been done before, not knowing what the outcome is going to be. So that's faith and yeah. hope and perseverance. And it's, it's not always going to have a happy ending or, or not the ending that you expect, mm -hmm. but there's yeah. still good things that come from it. And I just was thinking a lot about um, our African-American ancestors and how much they like threw their lives out on the line for something like, you know, the freedom to vote. Like they, yeah. they were out there dying over a vote and they didn't even know if that ever was going to happen or be a law. Thank God it is now, but at the time they were fighting for it, they didn't know how that was gonna turn out. And, and a lot of them didn't survive to see the results of it. So that's kind of what I was going for. And that might've been real heavy to throw on everybody with Ruth like that, but that's what I was thinking. That was, I was it thinking is. it was more symbolic. I mean, yeah. it, it makes it sense in hindsight. It was yeah. just like reading it. I was just like, yo, she's finally at a place where she can be like, she can be happy. She can be chill. Mm -hmm. She can be good. And then like yeah. death. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yo, that sucks. Yeah. That sucks so hard. Yeah. And it's, it's crazy. Cause she's probably like literally the healthiest one of them. And I yeah. feel like health yes. is like so relative. Because uh -huh. it's always like, oh, it was the one who went out and ran and took care of themselves and tried to eat healthy. Mm -hmm. And they're the ones who just like drop dead. And then you're like the people who eat pizza and sit on their couch and have high blood pressure right. and diabetes. They're like, right. how did you make it to 100, dog? Like, yeah, I don't understand. Like, our husband. like, why is he still kicking? And he's terrible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's yeah. trying, but yeah. So, yeah, I feel bad about that. <laughs> okay. So, since we're on the topic of the husband, like, mm -hmm how how did you feel writing his character and making him abusive but then like also like not naming him did he have a name was that intentional yeah yeah that was so on purpose and i'm so glad that y'all picked up on that yeah. um i i don't know if you ever saw the movie um the women there's two of this this, this movie um one was with um jada pinkett and i don't know why right now she's the only one i could remember but um the one woman there was a group of girlfriends um, they found out that a, one of the husbands was cheating with the spritzer girl at the uh, at the department store, mm -hmm. um, like at the perfume counter. And so all these girlfriends got together to try to like hunt down this side chick and find out who she was. And, and it's like a whole, it's like a comedy type of oh, movie. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, it was really good, but they never um, show the husband the entire time. This whole time they're like investigating, trying to find out who this spritzer oh. girl is. But they never show the husband. They never, I don't know if they give him a name, but they definitely don't show his face. Mm -hmm. And um, and I don't think they show any men in the movie at all. Hmm. And um, the original movie was done in 1938. And I think it was also called The Women. Mm -hmm. But that was a thing. They purposely tried to not give the man a face or a name in the movie to make it just be about the women. So when I did this, I wanted to make him like a real bad guy, but then I didn't even want to give him any respect at all. Like yeah. you don't even get a face, nothing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, so I, that was on purpose, but but I got that idea from that movie. I thought that was me. Okay, cool. I feel so smart and like my entire scholastic education was not wasted <laughs> because I picked up <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yeah, she caught it. I didn't even yeah. catch it. I was like, oh my gosh, you're right. Yeah. 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 No oh, name, good. no face. So, the monster. I feel satisfied now. Mm. Like, that's what I wanted to know. I have my, I have fulfilled my, my heart's <laughs> desire and I know the truth. You can rest easy now. Right? Yep. Now right. I know. <laughs> I know. Yeah. And yeah, and I know about the machete. So like, I, f I feel good. The case. <laughs> 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 I feel good. Okay, okay. All I'm right. All um, you now. Oh, okay. I was just listening. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Um, 
<laughs> well, I, I mean, we're kind of still in like that Ruth vein, sort of. Mm-hmm. But as the author, which were your favorite and favorite seat to write? Uh, you went out a little bit. Did you say the favorite oh, scene sorry. to write? Yeah, uh, favorite and least favorite scenes to write. Ooh. Um, my favorite scenes to write so seem so small, but it's like when the um, when the women would get together for their book club meetings, they would always pray um, at the beginning. I yeah. enjoy writing their their prayers because I feel like when we go to church or when we pray like that's how it sounds and you just hear like everybody's bracelets jangling together because they're holding hands and it's just real honest i just felt like it was real um i don't know i just felt like it's very honest so i liked writing those the prayers every time they got together um and i liked writing um those flashbacks i'm not the flashbacks but like yeah, the dream sequences. That was fun. Loved reading we those. We loved yeah. them. With those. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I liked gosh. writing those because I was like, let me make it as real as possible and then wake up. Oh, it was yeah. so good. Was, like, like at some points, you didn't even know that we were in a dream. Dream. And yes. you know, like as a reader, so when, when it popped out, it was like, <gasps> wait, yeah. like, wait, what? The, the what thing with the baby <laughs> at the hospital. You yeah. had oh my me gosh. Go. Yes. I was like, <laughs> yeah, I'm like who did he have another baby? Is this why? <laughs> like, oh, she's about to kill him. Kill him in the hospital. Yeah. Do it, girl. And then yeah. wake up. And I was like, bruh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not, you know, like that intensity you feel when you're in a dream. Like, yeah. I have yeah. woken up from dreams where, like, I can't feel the circulation in my hands because I'm, like, clenched like that. So that's yeah. how hard I wanted her to be in that dream. Mm-hmm and wake up from it and honestly some of the dreams that she had i did have those dreams and then i just made sure when i woke up i tried to write them down and then incorporate them into the story for her yeah that that gives a lot a different level of intensity right there Mm -hmm. actually Mm -hmm. but that's impressive like i was especially the one with like all of them got me but the one with the hospital and then the one with the dishwasher where she had the dream that she oh, had yeah. ruined irene's life yeah, savings yeah. and she's like why oh, is your money to dishwash <laughs> <laughs> i was just like that's a legitimate that question. one like felt that felt like the most real <laughs> to me that dream felt like the most real dream yeah, yeah i don't know especially because yeah. you know old people keep their money in weird places, weird places yeah. yes <laughs> honestly not even just the money when i so i wrote this book and then um my editor when she went through it you know she'd make notes like is this realistic does this like keep with the flow of the story and one note that she wrote in that section was um why is there cereal in the in the refrigerator <laughs> I <had that> <laughs> and i was like um, my great grandparents kept everything in the refrigerator because it keeps Bananas. the bugs out. Yeah, bread, <laughs> yeah. cereal, grits, like everything is in the refrigerator where yeah. it's kept fresh. So I yeah. think that might be a cultural thing. I just didn't know that seemed normal to me, well, but I thought it was funny that she picked up on it. For sure. Like I put bread in the fridge, but that's because it keeps a lot longer yeah, that way yeah. than on the counter because yeah. it doesn't mold as fast. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And um, and I understand like the rice and the grits, like now that you say it, because I'm like, oh yeah, that keeps the little pantry yeah. bugs out of it if you get yeah. those. Yeah. So yep. hey, that makes I'm learning something <laughs> or make, connecting dots. I kinda yeah. already knew it because my yeah. granny did the same thing and I'm like Yeah, it's old school. Why? <laughs> <laughs> And it would be like the same box of cereal. Like nobody ate the cereal. It was just yeah, like, it's, it's always, always there. back there in that corner. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> always like life cereal too. The cereal. Yeah, yeah. Water. That's yes. why I was still or, in there. As a kid, I hated hated Cheerios. Like you have honey nut Cheerios oh, and you yes. have frosted flakes yes. and then you have Cheerios and just corn flakes. Nobody wants Cheerios oh. or corn flakes. And yeah. then you uh, eat it, and they're like, "No, you can't put sugar on it. You just have to eat it as uh, is." It's like I didn't know. Uh, I was no. a child. See, my grandma, <laughs> my grandma would put like two cups of sugar on her flakes. I'm like, yeah. what's the point? Just buy right, frosted right. flakes. <laughs> flakes. <laughs> this, this is just milk with sugar. <laughs> she was point. like, "I'm not paying extra money for somebody to frost my flakes. I frost it myself. Put the sugar on here. Eat that." <laughs> The only, <laughs> the only cereal that we were allowed to add sugar to was uh, Rice Krispies because I don't. Oh yeah, they need that it. too. Like you were, yeah, ex- oh, I feel like you were expected oh. to buy the box and then add your own sugar. Like I don't yeah. know anybody yeah. who just ate it plain unless they got like the chocolate flavor or whatever they sell. Right, right, right. Oh right. yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, <laughs> but uh, getting off the topic of cereal, um, like of 
one of the things that you that was pointed out at the end of the book is when the fi- they like Ruth is gone and they continue on with their plan and they've got this financial advisor and she's there and she's talking to them and she's all impressed with them and everything. Low mm-hmm. key, I felt like, and I know it's kind of crazy. I felt like it was like kind of like subtle, not like subtle racism, but like how she looked at them like, oh wow, you ladies did all of this. That's mm-hmm. amazing. I never expected that from you. And I'm like, but like, don't do that. Don't yeah, do that. yeah. Like, why wouldn't you? Right, like. We're all capable yeah. women, you know? Right? So, you know, I don't know. I never thought about that that way, but oh, you're right. I just, no, I just right. maybe I'm just looking too far into things. No, you're yeah. right. But I mean, that's interesting to me because sometimes people from the outside looking in, they will make comments like that. And it might be coming from a real sincere place. But really, yeah. if you were to have thought before you said that, you may not have said it that way. At the same time, when you're on the receiving end of it, at least for me, it always strengthens me. It always makes me like, oh, yeah. Yeah. So you thought I couldn't, huh? I just sometimes I just wonder is like if this obviously it wouldn't because of, you know, who you are in the story that needed to be told. But it's just like I always wonder, like if these were like 12 white women sitting together in their book club and they were Mm -hmm. like, oh, we have all this money together that we want to put into a trust for our future kids. I just wonder if she would have made the same comment, you know? No, probably not. But I mean, probably not. But even Julene spoke to that earlier in the beginning. She saw all all other races or nationalities yeah. or cultures. She saw them doing things like this. So it is not as uncommon. Yeah. If we're doing it in in the African American culture, I just haven't seen it. I wish I would see it more. Yeah. Because you know maybe that was presumptuous of me to think that like we don't do it. I need to show people that we could do this maybe it's happening but i just don't see it i think you don't see it because it doesn't happen as frequently as it needs to for it to Mm -hmm. be a common thing definitely yeah yeah but um so that's the change (laughs) but i brought that up (laughs) to say that um i wanted to know do the kids after like everyone is, is gone do they handle the money like these like they should essentially because i know that the she was saying like hey you have to teach your kids what to do because when you're gone it's going to go to them and make sure that they understand what you worked for what it's for how to use it Mm -hmm. they have to be just as financially literate as you've made yourself right so i just wanted to know like do they keep with that because like honestly it would be so heartbreaking to have all of that effort go to waste and for yeah. it to not be paid forward, you know? Yeah, yeah. And I'll I'll say, I mean, this is for spoiler talk here. I mean, I'll never hurt y'all like I did by taking Ruth away. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I wish you that. <laughs> I mean, nothing's perfect, but I yeah. wouldn't I wouldn't destroy what they built. I mean, it it should be challenging, you know, because sure. different generations are managing it and they have some things to learn too. So there should be some challenges, but I won't destroy it. (laughs) That's good. Because I like part of me is like, I wonder how that would work. Just like being selfish and thinking about myself. I'm Mm -hmm. like, you know, if my mom had a friend who had a daughter and we had to like, and together jointly, we had this large sum of money. It's like, would we really be able to communicate about what it would be used for? Especially Mm -hmm. if our mindsets are like, so different different you know yeah. like how would that like how would that work how would that go but also it's like again the importance of teaching that literacy so that yeah, yeah. i would know and she would know and it would come from the people giving us the money like hey this is what it's used for this is how you use mm-hmm. it this is how you mm-hmm. maintain it right you know so i was just i i find that the concept of how that interaction would go kind of interesting especially as you get further and further you know down the line saying it makes it like six generations you know that's six yeah. generations removed of like my grandmother's 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 friend yeah started yeah. this you know yeah yeah it has to be um there has to be that structure in the beginning which is what the attorney was urging them to do was to set some very strict guidelines um legally Mm -hmm. so that future generations wouldn't be able to just willy-nilly do random things with this with this trust Mm -hmm. um but the other day i was watching uh on mtv the um the bush family i don't know what it's called but anyways like the anheuser bush the beer company Mm -hmm. um their their family has a reality show now so um so i was like 
Yeah, everybody does, but I'm always looking for the story, right? Yeah. This family is the fourth generation, the, the dad, he's fourth generation Bush. I didn't know that they are the Bush Gardens people. Oh. I, it's just, the whole thing just was an eye opener, but um, yeah. he's okay, fourth generation. Yeah, go ahead. Question. Are we talking about Bush Gardens, the amusement park, or Bush yes. Gardens, the beans? Amusement park. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> it's spelled different, you know, like Bush Beans, B U S H. Uh -huh. Oh, you're talking about Bush with the president. C. Yeah, yep. Okay. I didn't know the beer and the amusement park were same company. Huh. It's this family. And they wow. manage. Wow. For, well, now we're down to he's fourth generation. So his kids are fifth generation. Still like holding on to this money and managing this empire. So I saw it and I was like, dang, it can happen. And and not on a small scale. I mean, there, I know it's TV and it's a reality show, so I don't know how you know, much, how much that is real, but yeah. they have seven children. Wow. And, this, and it's just, you know, this is just him. I don't know how many siblings the dad oh, has yeah. or, or how big the family is, gotcha. but he's fourth generation and he's married and he has seven kids and they're still like benefiting off this money off this empire wow. you have to have a strategy in place to do that there's there's sure. no way it can happen loosely so yeah. my so my vision is that that's what can happen with this trust that these ladies build that they yeah. can I like that. magnify it like that i love yeah. that i, I like well, <laughs> i'm so that's i love it <laughs> yeah it's so good yeah. well i was just thinking like four generations for us is slavery or you may yes. you know what i mean so like we we have been playing catch up yes. for 155 years since slavery so it's like we have like maybe it wasn't our parents or grandparents but like like we've had to like start now and mm -hmm. it's just so amazing to me to see like how even while we're playing catch up we're still like smoking the competition in some regards you know yeah. that's so why they so, had to was, set us behind because you know? if they gave us level playing field it wouldn't even be a game anymore <laughs> it wouldn't be fair <laughs> It'd be Wakanda Nothing. forever. We can't let that yeah. happen. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. But but yeah, it's just so cool to see these women like I mean, if we want to be real real, we didn't get full rights in this country until my parents were children in the sixties. Like, right. we're still, still like, we're looking really to get full rights. Right. Still looking, you know, so it's just so cool to see these women doing this and taking this um in the book, taking this upon themselves to like really start actively bettering their children and grandchildren because like the opportunity is finally there. Yeah. And the knowledge is there. I mean, the knowledge. You yeah. don't know what you don't know. You know, if you don't, yeah. if you weren't taught financial literacy or like um, self discipline or yeah. personal responsibility by your parents or someone that cared about you, how are you supposed to know? And if you don't yeah. know, how are you supposed to teach someone else? Exactly. So I think that was like the, the, the trigger point for these ladies is, yeah. okay, whatever has happened up to this point, you can't do anything about it. Let's just start today. Even their kids who are like nearly adults or they are adults, it might be too late to pull them back in or you might not have time, but you can at least change it now. I did not wear this shirt on purpose. I've said change so I love many it. times. <laughs> I love it. It was meant to be. Yeah, so, so that was everything. Just make, just change it and, and yeah. set it in place for at least their grandchildren and let's see yeah. how that plays out. All the difference yeah it's not too late it's never too late to take a first step mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so okay um i that that's all the questions that i i wanted to ask like honestly and truly like i am so glad that i got to talk to you and like ask these questions and Same. get like clarity yeah. and like just <laughs> yeah. talk to you because like i've been texting you for a while and it's just like yeah. it's so nice to like I love meeting I'm, new yeah. authors and talking to them and just everything. I love the whole shebang. So thank you so much for agreeing to awesome. talk with I us, appreciate come on the podcast, it. everything. Yeah, I appreciate it. When I listened to your podcast, when you first did the book review, mm -hmm. I was sitting right here in this seat, like writing down notes and smiling so big at the computer because just your oh, voices, good. good voices and so, so intelligent as far as like how you were looking at the story and then the way you two talk to each other, 
it's just a it's such a good dynamic so oh thank you i was yeah. glad to listen to it but i'm i'm more excited to even like be in the in the screen here because <laughs> for sure, <laughs> for sure. Like, <laughs> I like you not. We were sitting here. We were like, oh, we're going to talk to her. We're going to talk. We're calling you Danes. I'm sorry. <laughs> but we're like, we're going to talk to Danes. <laughs> it's going to be great. Because we we loved your book. And we were just like, yes. we need more books like this. And I think I said this on the podcast. I was like, reading your book made me realize that I need to be more financially aware. And so, oh, yeah. like, yeah. Reading yeah. your book legit has changed my my life because it's just like, yeah. yo, we're making so much better decisions. Like we're planning for the future. We are like trying yeah. to not necessarily pay it forward, but just like yeah. be. There's no reason to not know, you know. And yeah, that's what, that's what you proved yeah. in yeah. in your book. It's just like these ladies come from a walk of life that this was never taught. This was never talked about. It's just yeah. expected that you're going to be on the back of the struggle bus for the back, for the rest of your life. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And so, and they're like, you they're know what? Nope. Right. Next stop is my stop. I'm getting off of yeah. this bus. Yes. Yeah. Enough of that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I love it. Thank you for writing the book. Thank you for continuing Thanks. to yes, write. Thank, thank you for being a part thank of you. the writing community for and sure. allowing us to just know each other and have good energy and good vibes and have a good time. And I'm so excited. Yeah. I'm happy, so I'm going to stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> well, you um, are doing it. I'm not even mad. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, but if that is it, I will close this out and we here yeah. will be good to go. LaCase, got anything? I did want to ask, okay, sorry. One last question. I yeah. think everybody will benefit from hearing it. I know I will. Um, what writing advice would you give to your younger self or the, yourself just oh. starting out? I oh, didn't yeah. ask you that. Oh my God, I'm so excited. Oh. I forgot to ask. Yeah. Play a co-host, yeah. girl. Yeah. Co-host. <laughs> right. Bad team. That's what we do. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all forgot. did. This is the first time I've ever yeah. forgotten. Oh my god. Because <laughs> you're well, because you're because you're so excited, rightfully so. So that's. I, cool. I got you. Thank you. No, yeah, that's okay. a good question. The um, the advice I would give to myself is finish writing it. Because mm-hmm. I was going through a drawer um, a couple of weeks ago and I found um, like a box with my old notebooks in it. And like, I'm that girl that would like write on the back of a napkin, like in yeah. the middle of the club. I got to I got to write this down because I don't want to forget it. Um, <laughs> I was that girl and I saved a lot of it and I found it um, not long ago. So I was reading through and I was like, dang, it's not bad. Like I should have yeah. finished that. I don't know. I don't know. I think um, I wasn't in the mindset of thinking I want to be a writer as a career. It just happened that I like to write and I like to read and I would write stuff down when I thought of it. But I wonder what would have what today would be like if I had finished, like pushed Mm. through and finished it at that point or even like pursued it on an educational level. Mm -hmm. I I never thought you could go to school to like learn literature or story structure or anything like in the writing industry it never even crossed my mind as a career path. So I would say like my younger self, I would say if that's really what your passion is, even though everybody else is going to be a doctor and a lawyer and all that stuff, if that's what your passion is, you should try to try to grow it. So, Amen. But like I said, it's never too late. <laughs> never nope. too late. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It never is. Well, thank you. That was, that's great. Great answer. Yeah. Thank is. you. Thank you for that question. It was good. Yeah. <laughs> all right that is it for this video you guys i will leave links to everything and everyone down in the description box so be sure to check that out and if you liked it please tap the like button if you are just this wonderful person go ahead and subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications and yeah thank you guys for watching and until next time i hope your days are lovely and your books are interesting thank you like and share and subscribe what she said (laughs) yeah